My name is Alan Swanson, and I'm a long-term member of recovery. And my drug of choice is alcohol. And thanks to recovery, and the people that go to the three recovery meetings I go to every week, I have not had the need to use my drug of choice since April 6, 2015. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to talk to you about smart recovery. So you're going to get a little bit of about what smart recovery is and is not that talk. And then I'm going to layer in with it a little bit of my story. So I may switch back and forth, and I, I've never done this before, so bear with me as far as this kind of a presentation, so hopefully it'll, it'll all flow through, and I have until, I have uh, about 20 minutes to do this, 25 minutes to do this in, so we'll see, hopefully we stay on time. <clears throat> what is SMART Recovery? SMART stands for um, Self-Management and Recovery Training. SMART Recovery is a nonprofit, volunteer, mutual, self-help, peer support group not to be construed as professional therapy. Smart recovery meetings generally last 90 minutes and are open to everyone. No one is required to participate if they do not wish to. Discussions and meetings focus on how to abstain from any type of addictive behavior by exercising the smart recovery tools and skills. Smart recovery was founded in 1994 as a nonprofit offshoot of something called rational recovery as an alternative to 12-step recovery programs. Smart Recovery has a central office which is located in Mentor, Ohio. The board of directors and all Smart Recovery facilitators are volunteers. Smart Recovery has only five paid staff members who work at the central office in Mentor, Ohio to coordinate administrative functions such as facilitator training, meeting registration, and meeting verifications which they do provide for online meetings. Smart Recovery is concerned with all forms of addictive behavior. The tools of smart recovery are optimized for abstinence, but can be used for moderation. Smart recovery views reason and scientific knowledge as the final authority in recovery. Smart recovery evolves as scientific knowledge and addiction recovery evolves. A religious or spiritual belief is not required. However, smart recovery participants hold religious or spiritual beliefs, although we do not focus on these in smart. In Smart Recovery, the emphasis is on self-empowerment. Smart Recovery offers both face-to-face -face meetings and online meetings. There are currently 1,338 face-to-face -face Smart Recovery meetings in the United States, 29 of which are in Minnesota, along with 491 face-to-face -face meetings held in other countries. There are currently 68 online Zoom meetings offered. The meeting I facilitate myself that I've been doing for five years is every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Central. And believe it or not, on Zoom, we get approximately 220 participants every meeting. Every meeting. That type of meeting that I facilitate, which is a discussion meeting, meeting verifications are available for select online meetings. Um, Smart Recovery Worldwide, um, Smart Recovery holds meetings in 18 other countries, including Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, Brazil, Denmark, Haiti, Hong Kong, India, Kenya, Malaysia, Mexico, Nambia, Romania, Russia, Singapore, Spain, Sweden, and Trinidad and Tobago. So before I get into what SMART, what the program's all about, let me inter interject a little bit of my story. How did I get to stand here tonight in front of you? You know, I was born and raised in Minnesota. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn Center. I went to Park Center High School. I went to Mankato State University. Growing up, I had a pretty normal upbringing. I have one sister and my parents. If you guys all are old enough to remember the show, All in the Family, if you knew Art, Archie and Edith Bunker, you knew my parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I grew up, I wasn't the I wasn't using when I was growing up, like in high school and stuff. I was the nerdy kid, and this is in the 80s, who spent his weekends either playing Dungeons and Dragons with his friends. By the way, I still I recently was able to get back together with those friends that they're playing again. And I'll get to that. That's a... Uh, vital absorbing creative interest, as we say in SMART. I was very involved in church, and I, and I was captain of the debate team. I didn't want to get in trouble. I taught Sunday school, so that was my upbringing. And I, I didn't, I didn't uh, use or indulge in my drug of choice, and believe it or not, until I was, I was of drinking age, which was 19, back in 1983. I grew up, and I, I went, my chosen career path to success was IT. And I've been working in IT for 
34 years. The only thing I've done in my career came early on when I was in high school. I wrote a computer system so a girl could talk using an Apple computer before they had iPads and things. That was my upbringing. And so when I got into college, I finished college, I got started working, and uh, eventually had a, I got married. I had a son who's here now. Uh, we got divorced. I remarried, got divorced, and then I, I met uh, my current wife, and we've been married over 20 years. And she has two children from her first marriage, and we blended her families together. And we got married in uh, 2000. You know, around this time, I was traveling for work. I, I, kind of an interesting thing happened. I had a consultant working for me, and I had my seat in the back of the plane, and he's like, hey, I travel all over. I've got status. I don't what's that? I don't know. He goes, hey, would you like to sit in first class with me? I'm like, sure, that's great. And so I wound up sitting in a first class seat, and lo and behold, that was a short trip to Chicago, and they gave me like, I asked for a, a, a drink, and they gave me four. I thought, and I got to sit in first class? I thought, that was really kind of cool. And so, now, I mean, now it's to me, and I, 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 I began a pattern of, as we say in smart recovery, I began a pattern of misusing alcohol. I use it as a way to escape, to deal with the stress of my life, rather than processing those through normal, healthier things that I learned growing up. I just forgot what those were all about. And eventually that led to me having something called gastric bypass surgery to lose weight. Now I'm big, but I used to be really big. And I had gastric bypass surgery in 2008, and I lost 174 pounds. Um, but alcohol was probably not a good idea for me to drink after that because the alcohol, the blood in my, the blood in my bloodstream when I when I take the alcohol would would would, would hit me much faster than it used to. You know, one for me would be like six for you. Still would be. So I started having some consequences. I started blacking out when I drank. I started saying things when I was at uh, social gatherings with our friends. And my wife's like, I think you have a problem. And I was kind of like, mm, I don't think I do. <laughs> She's like, I think you have a problem. And I think you should do something about that problem. And so around this time, and this is 2012, I looked online and I wasn't going to go to that thing they call 12 step. So I looked online and I found something called Smart Recovery. And I found out they had online meetings and face to face. So I showed up in the spring of 2012 to my first Smart Recovery meeting. I didn't show up there because, well, I thought everything was great. And I was self actualized and, you know, my life was perfect. I showed up there because I, my life was, was becoming unhinged. And so they introduced me to this book, which is the Smart Recovery Handbook, and in this book there's tools that I'll go into in a second. And I thought, I thought, you know what? This is great. I'll, I can learn what these tools are. I can know the tools. I can be on these meetings on my laptop and walk around my house so my wife would see that I'm on the meeting, have my check-in all ready to go, and just listen. And this is great, and this will take the heat off of me because I really don't have a problem, and life will be great. And so that is how I got started in Smart Recovery. Um, I thought I was there voluntarily. At the same time, I went to an outpatient treatment at Nystrom's in Otsego. I thought I went there voluntarily. I decided I, I wasn't as sick of the people in my group. I had the safe drug of choice, so I, I declared my, since I had no legal complications, I declared myself um, well. And I checked out of that. And Smart Recovery, I went to a few online meetings and I went to a face-to-face -face meeting at that time in Chaska. I went to a couple of those meetings. And I just thought, you know, the heat's kind of off, so I'm gonna stop going. But I knew that Smart Recovery was there. So hold that thought. Back to Smart Recovery. So I said, Smart Recovery opened up as an alternative to 12 step. Well, instead of 12 steps, Smart Recovery has four points. There's only four points in the Smart Recovery program that we all work together. Point one, building and maintaining motivation. How do we stop using our drug of choice? How do we moderate using our drug of choice? The tools of Smart, by the way, are designed to work best as an abstinence-based program. 
But if people want to moderate, they can do that. That's fine. Two, coping with urges. You know, when, when I just decide I'm not going to go to the liquor store in my favorite bar, something comes up to stress me out, and I have an urge, how do I deal with that? So we have tools and things that we use to work on with that. Three, managing thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. You know, we learned, and I, when I first came to Smart Recovery in the meetings, here's something I, I thought you guys might think this is interesting. No, I think it's funnier, funnier than anything. But the facilitator at the, one of the first meetings I was on was talking about how many of you get angry. So I said, yes, oh yeah, I did, I do. I thought it was a healthy thing. Oh yeah, just get my frustrations out. And I got introduced to this idea that's not unique to smart recovery, that maybe it's for someone like me that abuses alcohol, maybe it's not the greatest idea to allow myself to get angry. And in smart recovery, we look at how does our, what's our source of disappointment? And we boil it down to three areas, whether or not others in our life uh, disappoint us, we did, uh, life itself disappoints us, like the night my mom passed away or my dad, or, the, or if we disappoint ourselves. And so we get into the idea on the third point of unconditional other acceptance, unconditional life acceptance, and unconditional self-acceptance. And then the last thing is living a balanced life. And sometimes, you know, being in recovery for as long as I've been in on that, I'm still a newcomer, but being recovered for a while, I start to think sometimes my drug of choice is more. <laughs> you know, if I stop something over here, I might do too much of one thing over there. So we work on living a balanced life in smart recovery to balance things out. Um, our meetings follow a standard outline. Um, there are variations, but a 90-minute meeting, we do welcome and introductions for the first 10 minutes. Then we do check-ins and sending our agenda, um, which is 35 minutes, and then we'll spend 40, time, 40 minutes working on that agenda. And there's a facilitator, and they're there just there to keep things flowing. That's what I do. And then at the end, we do a pass the hat, which is taking contributions or donations, and we do a checkout and a closing, what did I learn from the meeting? If you're at a face-to-face -face meeting, the pass the hat will go to pay for the room that you're in and some coffee, and the rest goes to the central office. If you're online, it just goes to the central office. We don't expect people to, to give contributions, but we, we need contributions, and we appreciate it when they can do that. There are different types of recovery meetings in Smart Recovery. There's a general meeting. There's a discussion meeting, which is the format of an online meeting I facilitate on Sundays. There's a beginner's meeting. There's a tool time meeting. There's a meeting where they go into depth in all of these tools that I'm going to cover in a second. There's a friends and family meeting. Does that guess guess what that's the equivalent of in 12 step? Alanon. So there is a version of Alanon in Smart Recovery. It's called friends and family, and they have in person and online for those. We have, and we have specialty groups for everything under the sun you can imagine. Um, we also hold meetings in treatment centers, and also we we do hold meetings in correctional facilities. One of the things in Smart Recovery that I learned in this but we they believe in what's called the stages of change. So the first stage of change is pre-contemplation, which is, I don't think I have a problem. You know, when I was traveling, but the, I, you know, the travel thing took off for me. I was, I made sure I had status in Delta Airlines. Mm -hmm. And I was flying between, between Minneapolis and Seattle. And so when I had to come up with my Smart Recovery username in 2012, my, my username to this day is Sleepless in Seattle. I don't live in Seattle. I commute there. But I, I, but I spent many sleepless nights in my hotel room because my whole trip was based on drinking and drinking in a consequence-free environment. You have a problem, Alan. What problem? You have a red coat coming to meet you at the gate and your flight from Seattle, didn't you, because you were acting crazier than hell in the first class cabin. Everyone has that happen to them. What do you mean? Pre-contemplation. Contemplation. Well, that's probably not a great, you know, it's probably not a great idea for me to go on a seven-day drinking binge, but that was just a one time. It won't happen again. Um, determination preparation. Well, now, even though I said I'm not going to do anything until I get a DUI, now Easter week in 2015, I got my DUI. Um, I'm going to voluntarily go to treatment. And I'm going to start going back to these smart recovery meetings. And maybe this time, check this out. I might actually use the tools. Hmm. Action, which is where I see myself now after five and a half years. I'm going to go to, I have my three meetings a week I'm going to go to. 
when someone asks me to be a service in recovery, I'm, as much as I can, I'm going to answer that request with why yes, that'll be most convenient for me, even though I may not be. Um, and I'm going to um, ask others for help when I need help. And I do. I do all the time. Maintenance, after a few months, you know, when, when things go to, things are a regular cycle, we have a stage of change called maintenance, which is, this is just second nature to me. It's just flowing and no, no, one's, too, no one's worried about what I'm going to do because they know it's very predictable. I got, I got my meetings, I got my plan, I've got my tools, I'm using my tools and things are good. And then believe it or not, in Smart Recovery we have a graduation or exit. And, they, and some people may decide that they want to move on once they've gotten this thing so pat that they just move on and graduate from Smart Recovery altogether. That's the stage of change. The reason all this is important is there's relapse. And I've relapsed, I've relapsed plenty, believe me. And we believe that when you relapse, it's not a stage of change, it's an event. And if you're in action and you relapse, if I relapse, I'm not going to go back to sort of pre-contemplation, but maybe I go back to planning. So anyway, the stages of change are real important to smart recovery, and we talk a lot about that in our meetings, and we try to help our, each other figure out where we're at. And we have tools, as I mentioned. So um, tools that we use for building and maintaining motivation, hierarchy of values. What are the five most important things in my life? Here's what they are now. My recovery, my granddaughter, my children, my wife, and then I could add a few others, my family, my career. Number one is my recovery. Why? Because without it, I have nothing. Brandon, my son, just came back into my life uh, this Christmas, the first time in seven years he spent Christmas with me. How did I get there? Because he decided he wanted to give me his trust back. And that's why he's here. And I'm very grateful to all of you because he's here tonight. But anyway, number one is my recovery. You notice in, in my list, I didn't mention alcohol, did I? So tonight, if something really, if someone cuts me off in traffic on the way home and I get really frustrated, I'm tempted to think about using my drug of choice again. If that comes into my thought, I'm going to remember what my hierarchy of values are. Does my action of using align to that hierarchy of values? No, it does not. Now, in 2012, when I first joined, I had I been honest, which I wasn't, I would have just said, my hierarchy of values, alcohol, and that's it. Um, we have another tool called the, called the cost-benefit analysis tool. When you do it, it looks like this. This is actually one I did July 30th, 2012. Now, my sobriety date's April 6th, 2015. But you, you dissect a page like this, and we can do these on different things, but this is using my drug of choice. What are the advantages to me using my drug of choice? There have to be advantages, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't be using it. What are the disadvantages of using my drug of choice? What are the advantages of not using my drug of choice, and what are the disadvantages of, the, of not using it? And we find out the advantages of using are short-term. Disadvantages long-term. Advantages of not using are uh, long-term. Right? And the disadvantage of the short term. So again, another tool when we're trying to figure out if it's a good idea to pick up our drug of choice and use it, that's what we use. Um, tools for coping with urges, we have urge logs, we have the dense tool, delay, deny, delay, escape, avoid, attack, accept, distract, and substitute. Here's one I really love, <coughs> disarm for urging. Destructive images and self-talk awareness and refusal method. This is that car salesman in all of us. Hey, Alan. You can stop over at CashWise and pick up one, no one will And you know, early in Smart Recovery, I, I used to work for a vice president when I was a director at a big company. So I used to imagine that my inner salesman telling me that was him, just so I wouldn't go, just to spite him. I'm like, I'll show you, I won't go, ha ha, you know. And, to be, and to be, that, work, that, work, that was fairly effective, actually. Another tool that we use for a lot of the different uh, four points is the ABC tool. Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. What is that? B is an irrational belief. You know, I, you, you can take your poison. My, my, someone in my family over the holidays is using my drug of choice. My irrational belief is if I don't, if I, if I have a problem using alcohol, they don't get to use it either. Activating event, they use it in front of me. Consequences, I get pissed and I go off and buy, buy a, a bottle and I use. Dispute. Dispute my rational belief. You know, my, my family member doesn't have a problem, Alan, 
<laughs> he doesn't have to control his drinking. If I have to control my drinking, that's a problem. I don't have to control my applesauce use, right? Um, effective new way of thinking is, it doesn't bother me if someone uses my drug of choice around me. They're not trying to get me to relapse. Um, I have the problem with it, they don't. And if it's uncomfortable, I can always find a way to leave or do something, go to another room and do something else. So that's one of the tools we use. There's some other tools. The big one I mentioned earlier, vital observing creative interest for lifestyle balance. Why is that important? Because, I don't know about you, but when I was using my drug of choice, alcohol, I didn't just use it like this. Ask my son. I used it in a big way. I used to make him wait for me, and when I came on a red eye flight, I had him wait for me for two hours out in the parking lot while I got loaded at the Sky Club in the morning before I went home. And I spent a lot of time thinking about that, doing it, and then cleaning up all the consequences. Well, when I decided to abstain for me, which I did, on April 6, 2015, guess what? I got a lot of time back. What do I do with all that time? Because if I don't fill that time in with stuff, and it's not just volunteering and recovery, you know, it could be cooking, it could be take, I was taking care of my mom before she passed away, it could be scuba diving. You know, I, went, I, I took out a camera that I was too worried about, about injuring myself diving when I was drinking to, uh, with an underwater housing. I took it out, I said, let me try this thing out. I took it out to Fiji in 2016, about a year and a half into my recovery program and my sobriety. And I took a picture of a 15-foot tiger shark at short range. Amazing the things we do. So vital observing creative interests, the things we do to fill in all that time that we got back. Smart recovery help, training and aids. Um, if you sign up for a free smart recovery online account, you get access to our forums, which we have open and restricted boards. There's a 24 by 7 online chat room, so if you need help and you can't call someone in recovery, we have, we have volunteers that go on there to help you out if you're thinking about using or having other problems. Um, we have facilitator training. I've been trained as a smart recovery facilitator. I completed an online training class and two working sessions with other with, a, with trained facilitators, and I had to do 12 weeks of on-the-job training before I got to fly solo on the meeting I facilitate. Um, we have literature, so I have here, this is the smart recovery handbook. You're welcome to come take a look at it. Um, we also have a facilitator training guide and a friends and family guide. We also do continuous training, and we have national conferences and regional conferences. Hmm. Key differences between smart recovery and 12-step. Number one, in smart recovery, we don't label ourselves. We do not call ourselves addicts or alcoholics. Why? Because we feel it goes against that unconditional self-acceptance. You can label, I can call myself an alcoholic and a smart man if I want, but it has no place in smart recovery. Number two, sponsorship is not part of smart recovery, but you can have a sponsor or a sober coach or a life coach, whatever you want. You can have one, it's just not part of SMART. As I said earlier, you don't have to believe in a power greater than yourself to work a recovery program in SMART. However, you're open to have a higher power if you want one. Here's one that's really different. How many times have you, if you've been, any of you been at 12-step meeting, you said, we don't, we don't have crosstalk. Guess what, SMART recovery, there's crosstalk. We even say it after the check-ins. Crosstalk's allowed, we encourage it. And again, Smart Recovery is a program of abstinence, but participants can elect to strive for moderation and harm reduction. And I gotta be honest with you, and, and this is just my own take on it, I think Smart Recovery and 12-step actually have more in common than they do differences, and that's just my take. So I invite you, any of you that are interested, I do a meeting Sunday nights at nine o'clock. I open the room up at 8.30 and show some inspirational videos. You can come as an observer. And if you want to participate, you're come, you can come as a participant. Just to get the link to the Zoom meeting, you just have to go to smartrecovery.org and sign up. And it's an anonymous username, and it's all confidential and private. So if you want to do that, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions you might have.